I'm Zainab Badawi and a lovely warm welcome from Santiago, Chile for the first ever BBC World News Intelligence Squared debate from South America. Now we all know that the use and trade of illicit drugs is a massive problem for every country. But nearly all of the global supply of cocaine comes from here in South America. So it is this part of the world which is on the front line of the war on drugs and sadly, as a result, has the highest murder rate on earth. Well now, influential voices on the continent and beyond are saying that the war on drugs has failed and that it is time for a new and radical approach. So, that is our motion here in Chile. The world should legalize drugs. And we have a great lineup of speakers for the motion. Former president of Chile, Ricardo Lagos, and also with him is the eminent uh, economist Klaus Schmidt Hebel, also from Chile. Arguing against the motion from the United States, Robert Bonner, the former head of the US Drug Enforcement Agency and also the renowned Brazilian psychiatrist, Dr. Ronaldo Laranjera. That is our panel. Welcome to you all. So, we're going to hear our four speakers put their arguments for and against the motion, and then we will invite comments from the floor, from the audience here in um, Santiago, and we will ask the audience to vote to see where they stand on the motion during the course of this debate. All right, our first speaker, Ricardo Lagos, was president of Chile from 2000 to 2006, and he left office with an historic 70% approval rating. A distinguished uh, lawyer and human rights activist, he was foremost amongst the opponents of General Augusto Pinochet, and he also served on the Global Commission on Drugs Policy. Let me begin saying, with a very clear statement, all of us agree here that the consumption of drugs is harmful for health, for human beings. After saying that, I would say that the 1961 United Nations Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs is correct when in a very clear way they say in the convention that the final purpose of the system was to improve the health and welfare of mankind. That's the real issue. I could say that the decision was to say, since drugs are bad, market of drugs is going to be illicit, illegal, and that's it, period. And we have to punish the production, the cultivation, distribution, everything. To some extent, and we have to punish in a very strong way, as it should be. This punitive law enforcement paradigm, I think that is over. That in 1960, nobody could envision what's going to happen in today's world. Because in today's world, after 50 years, consumption has increased at incredible levels. So, from this point of view, it's a being a failure. Needless to say, the production in dollars terms is huge in everything. In cocaine, 85 billion. Heroin, 55 billion. Cannabis, 141 billion, and so, and so. And this is the reason why I think that the paradigm is failing. 
is a big business that is produced mostly in this part of the world, but most of the consumption takes place in the other part of the world, in the developed part of the world. And I don't need to tell you that most of the increases in this part of the world are rather small, vis-a-vis -vis the large increase that take place in the developed world. Nevertheless, it's in this part of the world where most of the fighting, the gunfight, the narco traffic is taking place and is producing what we can see every day. In short, I think that now the time has come to have a different paradigm where you are going to be able to use and to say, look, first, it's a question of health with regard to those that are addicted and has no way to solve the issue. It's much easier to provide them the drug by official channels. Number two, it's essential to understand that the only way is to be able to focus from the part of the money supply. There has been many ways. The question of weapons and controls. All of us know that the weapons of those people are pari passo with the weapons of many of the armies in this region. Number three, military crackdown may exacerbate criminal violence. And the big issue is, are we going to be able to break the taboo? The taboo that means, why are we not going to be able to experiment trying to legalize, trying to sell the, this, the same drugs like a pharmaceutical? And let me ask, and let me end with just one question. I don't want to, I don't want to quote Milton Friedman, but Milton Friedman is right. According to Friedman, much more people die because tobacco or alcohol than with drugs. Why we have this quite different way to approach these two issues? Why is it not possible to say I'm going to regulate? If it is possible to have that with regard to drugs and to take the right measures and to sell at the right prices and not at the black market and therefore the gangs, the narco-traffic, will be defeated because they have no money to come from the black market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Arguing against the motion, we have from the United States, Robert Bonner, and he's a former head of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. He's also a former chief of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And Robert, you also served as a uh, federal judge in California. Done so please, everything. you've done everything. I'm surprised you found the time to join us today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm delighted to be here in Santiago, but let us understand clearly what this motion is. It is a proposal not just to legalize the use of drugs, but to legalize the manufacture, the production, and sale of all drugs. That, that's not just marijuana, ladies and gentlemen. That includes cocaine in both smokable crack form and powder, it includes heroin, crystal methamphetamine, PCP, LSD, and other highly addictive and psychoactive drugs. If you vote for the motion, that is what you will be voting for. There is a vast difference between decriminalization of the use of drugs and legalization, that is to say legalizing the large-scale manufacture and sale of those drugs. The first and foremost reason to oppose legalization as proposed, both for your country and around the world, is that it will lead to an increase, a substantial increase, in the number of people that are using and become addicted and become dependent upon these drugs. It only stands to reason that if addictive drugs like crack and meth are more readily available and inexpensive, 
more people in society, especially young people, will use them. One must ask, do we, do you, want a nation of stoners, crackheads, and junkies? Yeah. A mixed reaction out there. I mean, the, the question is, do you want a country where there's a much larger percentage of people that are using and abusing and addicted to drugs like cocaine, heroin, and meth? And I say, I hope not. Legalization will also result in commercialization of these drugs. We're already seeing this commercialization of marijuana in the state of Colorado, and the marijuana industry there is becoming already powerful and influential. It is not only advertising on billboards around that state, but it is packaging marijuana as candy, cookies, chocolates, laced with high potency THC, which as I think you know is the psychoactive ingredient, chemical in marijuana. And it will result in a cocaine industry, it will result in a meth industry, methamphetamines, and so forth with the intent of getting more people, especially young people, hooked on their product. Their influence on politicians with legalization will be enormous. And once this course is set, and this I want you to remember, once the course is set, it is going to be very, very difficult ever to go back. President Lago stipulated that these drugs are harmful, and they are. They are highly addictive, uh, either psychologically or physically or both. The facts are that one out of three heroin users becomes addicted to heroin. One out of four cocaine users becomes addicted. And one out of six teenagers who regularly use marijuana become dependent upon it. One out of six. Lastly, the uh, very issue here is why are we considering this breathtaking radical proposal of full legalization of all drugs it's because, as has been suggested, the drug war has somehow failed. Well, we've never had a war on drugs, and certainly in the literal sense of that term. And it's not even a very good metaphor uh, for a drug control policy because it implies some ultimate victory. And let me just say, that might, that's the goal of a sound drug policy, policy, to reduce the numbers of users of these drugs in our society. And that goal is not aided by legalization of the production and sale of these drugs, but quite the opposite. It will only make matters worse. Thank you. Robert Bonner, thank you very much. So arguing for the motion now, we have from here in Chile, Klaus Schmidt-Hebel. He is professor of economics at the Catholic University in Chile. He is a former chief economist at the OECD at his headquarters in Paris and also has worked as a consultant at the World Bank and also for many other institutions and many governments all over the world. So please do come and make your arguments for the motion. Thank you, Zuna. Thank you. Let me start with the obvious. Drug addiction or excessive consumption of drugs, meaning wine or cocaine, tobacco or heroin, is terrible. Drug addiction destroys individuals and destroys entire families. Now let me add something less obvious, but equally true. The way we have tried to limit drug addiction and consumption by declaring most drugs illegal has failed miserably. Since the start of the war on drugs 50 years ago, drug addiction has increased manyfold as exemplified by President Lagos. The lessons of the US prohibition and the subsequent repeal are most relevant for the world at large today. Why? Because since the 60s, the world is conducting a policy experiment that is similar to the US prohibition. And this is conducted at a grander global scale. It's a worldwide war on drugs. Symbolic or not, it's an excellent description of what the world is attempting to do. But today, the evidence is overwhelming and clear. The world's battlefields in this global conflict are scattered with the hubris, the wounded, and the dead of this war. Let me briefly refer 
to seven facts that substantiate why and how we have lost this 50-year-long war on drugs. Fact number one, ever-rising government resources are spent on enforcing current drug policies. One case, the US alone, federal expenditure on drug control rose from 5 billion 30 years ago to 25 billion in today's federal budget. Fact number two, markets of illegal drugs have grown many fold since the 60s. Consumption of soft and hard drugs have, has increased many times in most countries in the world. Let's go to prices. In the US, the average price of heroin, cocaine, and cannabis has declined by at least 80% during the last two decades. Fact number three, the illegality of drugs leads to crime at a massive scale, well beyond drugs. Massive illegal production and trade in drugs leads to large-scale drug mafias, drug wars, and spreading of violence and crime well beyond the direct trade of illegal drugs. A case in point is Mexico, actually. Since 2008, 75,000 people, 75,000 estimated victims have been killed in the wars between drug gangs. Fact number four, drug addiction has increased many fold over the last decades. Here, a case in point is this country, Chile. Our country has the world's highest consumption rate of cocaine, crack, and cocaine paste among young people in 2010. Mr. Bonner, we are there. This country has a 8% rate of life prevalence under total illegality, under total prohibition. Fact number five, new synthetic drugs come to the markets every year. The last report by the UN uh, shows that last year, 348 new psychedelic drugs hit world markets, taking a growing share of the total illegal drug market. Fact number six, wide-scale corruption is spread by drug illegality. Maybe not in the US, but in countries with weaker institutions, like most developing countries in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, are particularly prone to be corrupted by illegal drug gangs. My last fact. Number seven, the world has legalized very damaging in drugs, something like 18, while it is prohibiting others. Recent medical studies, which to my knowledge has not been questioned to date, classifies alcohol, alcohol as the first, fourth worst drug in the world and tobacco as the sixth, number six worst drug among 20 drugs. All other drugs, the 18 illegal drugs, are classified according to their damage ranging from heroin and cocaine, very damaging, the first three, four places, to LSD, steroids, and ecstasy, among the least damaging illegal drugs classified maybe 15, 18, or 19. Therefore, if we want to repress consistently and according to damage to consumers, to people, we should criminalize and persecute and prosecute alcohol and tobacco production, alcohol and tobacco trade and consumption now. However, apparently, this does not seem to be a very sensible policy option. Therefore, as a result of declaring defeat in the worldwide war on drugs, based on my seven facts, what is required, the world requires urgently an internationally coordinated, gradual legalization of many drugs. Mr. Bonner, not all drugs, definitely not all drugs, of many drugs, complemented by very effective prevention and rehab of drug consumption and addiction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Klaus Schmidt-Hevel. Now, arguing against the motion, the world should legalize drugs, we have from Brazil, Ronaldo Laranjera, and he heads Brazil's National Institution for Drugs Policy, and Ronaldo has written extensively on the impact of addiction on for drugs and alcohol, both for the individual and society at large. Dr. Laranjera, please, your time starts now. Thank you very much. As English is not my first language, I do apologize again. My first point is legalization does not work. Before the creation of the tobacco industry, exactly one century ago, the number of tobacco users was around 
The biggest event in public health in the 20th century was the creation of uh, cigarettes, industrial cigarettes. This product has changed dramatically the history of public health. Tobacco killed more people in the last century than all wars in the last 2,000 years. That's the size of the, of the damage that the tobacco industry and that the legalization of this product made. If we knew that, what we know now about tobacco would never legalize tobacco. What worries me more in Colorado, when you legalize, it's not legalize only the joint of cannabis. You legalize all sorts of products. The industry, the cannabis industry in America today is working the same line that the tobacco industry 100 years ago. And make no mistake, when the one industry launched the stock a few weeks ago, that they would launch a new product, an electronic cigarette, where you'd have 100% of THC. I don't think the legalization will sort this problem. That's not the society that I want to, to imagine, but you can have a catalog of a different products of, of can, cannabis, different concentration, and then you can simply buy it. I, I don't believe that that's possible. Last example that I would give you is example of Brazil. Brazil changed its law in 2006 and will decriminalize completely the drugs. Everybody, nobody can be arrested because of uh, uh, using drugs. What happened? The consumption increased. And the government didn't do their, their work, didn't create prevention, didn't do anything, just change the law and leave it to the market. Then today we have in the city of Sao Paulo a good experience of legalization that I would like to invite Mr. President and all the, the, the children to see. It's a shame for us to live in Sao Paulo when you have literally hundreds of people buying and use crack on the streets of Sao Paulo. And the municipal police is around to protect people to, to, to use these drugs. That's an experience of legalization. That's not the, the idea that I call a responsible drug policy. Then before we discuss about change dramatically uh, 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 laws in our country, we'll say we are doing the basic a treatment system and a prevention system that is working, and we have evidence based that many, many actions in prevention can work, but you have to do that, you have to invest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Ronaldo Laranjero. So, you've heard the um, arguments from our panelists, and we want to hear from you now here, the audience in Chile, Santiago, of course, the capital of Chile. But before we do, let me give you the results of our pre-debate vote. As you all came in, we asked you where you stand on the motion, the world should legalize drugs. For the motion, 59%. Five, nine. Against the motion, 22%, and don't know, 19%. So as things stand, the majority of the people here in the audience in Santiago are for the motion with you, Mr. President, and Klaus Schmidt-Hebel. Okay, so that's how it stands, but don't give up, chaps. You know, it depends on um, how you take it from here. All right. Can I invite questions and comments from the audience? Please keep them as brief and to the point. Yep. Okay. Yes, my question is for Dr. Lavangera. Why are we discussing this at all? All of you have mentioned the damage done to young people by this. And my question is more of a medical nature, really, than a policy nature. 
Why on earth do human beings, especially young ones, get addicted? What is it that happens within ourselves? What is it that is so attractive about this whole business? Why do we produce drugs at all? Is there an answer? Thank you. The lady there, with, yep, please stand. Uh, hello. Uh, it seems it's a common opinion that uh, war against drugs has failed. So let's imagine that we really legalize drugs. My question is a little step before. Which conditions should a country have in order to legalize drugs and don't have a big social disaster? Thank you. Thank you. Give it to the lady there. Yep. Yeah. If drugs were legalized, what drug dealers or drug cartels would think? And how are they going to be considered in the legal framework? Thank, Thank you. you. And there's a lady there. It's clear that making drugs illegal has created artificially high prices in the market. So if drugs were be, to be legal, it's likely that the cost would drop considerably. If, if you were to make drugs illegal, what types of policies would you propose keeping in mind, keeping in mind that taxes, increasing taxes too much would create incentive for a black market? Okay, one more to the lady there, yeah. So uh, Chile has one of the highest level of the world in marijuana consumption in the range of age from 10 to 17 years old. Mm? Because there is no awareness of the risk involved, the levels of consumption keep increasing every year. At the same time, the scientific community has no doubt about the damage marijuana inflicts on the capacity to learn, and it's linked with psychotic disorders. Mm? So, uh, Mr. President, don't you think that legalizing, because in Chile this is the plan, only marijuana would send a very confusing and misleading from the authorities to the young people? Thank you. Mr. President, if you could answer that question there yeah. directly, are you not sending confusing messages? Yeah. First of all, I would like to say that we are not planning to legalize all drugs, you know. I don't think it's a sensible policy. What I do know is that the actual war is not working. And I'm sorry that my opponent didn't mention the question of what's going on with the tremendous amount of money of the gangs, of the narco-traffic, because this is very unfair. We produce, but mostly they consume in the other part of the world. And therefore, needless to say that most of the money remains in the other part of the world because the system of how much are you increasing the payment. Why I say this? Because you know, the people that is being killed are being killed in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. But Mr. President, you're not, answering, you're not answering the latest question. It sounds no, like you're I'm making answer, a, a answer, point I'm there to Robert the question Bonner. With regard to marijuana. And with regard to marijuana, I could say, let us try. Let us try. And after that, you can say, what about cocaine? But no more than that. But that will take what? Five yeah. years? Ten years? Okay. Robert Bonner? President Lagos is backing away from that now, so I think you should vote on our side when you get a chance. But. But here's the message, you're sending... No, no, no. You're sending a terrible message to all of the young people of your country. That's a terrible message because not only have you said society doesn't disapprove of people trafficking and dealing and importing crack and cocaine and methamphetamine, you're actually, it's almost a sign that society is approving these drugs. You don't want to do that. Believe me, you don't want to do that. Notice one thing. They said nothing about my argument that the main reason to vote against this is you're going to have a substantial increase in drug users and addicts and people dependent on drugs in your society, and you are. And the reason they can't deny that is it's undeniable. That is, you lower the price and availability of these drugs. They are easy. going to be used more, believe me. Wait, yes, yes, sir. This is not what happened right, yeah. in the United States with alcohol. Well, let, me, let, me say, let me say, Mr. President, no. I'm, 
and, and Klaus, Klaus raised this point, and I want to address it, and that was that prohibition against alcohol in the United States did not work. Well, first of all, let's, let's, let's pay attention to what the facts are. Briefly. Alcohol use dropped by one-third in the United States during prohibition, okay? So the use of alcohol actually did drop. It's hard to prohibit, by the way, a drug that's been around for 5,000 years and part of our culture and society, mm -hmm. by the way. We've okay. learned that. But the, no, just the other thing. Yeah, you know, just on drugs, if we could stick to drugs. Before yeah. prohibition, there was organized crime in the United States. Okay. Dr. Ronaldo Laranjero, you uh, want to come in, but also could you answer that question about why do, in particular, young people become addicted to drugs? You know that, you've worked at the sharp end yeah. as a psychiatrist. Uh, I think there are a culture of uh, stimulating the use of drugs has been around for many years. We have a, a popular culture on that. And of course, you have much more availability of drugs than you used to have 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I want to, to answer also a, a, a question. Which conditions should the country must have before legalization? I think it's a good question. Well, you're because... arguing for legalization now. I thought you were against the no, motion. No, I am <laughs> against, of course. But if you decide to legalize, you have, as a country, you have to say, are we offering treatment to everybody who is affected to, to, to drug dependence? Are we offering the best evidence-based uh, prevention that you have? Are we offering to the families all the support that they have? Because it's important to know, for each people using drugs, you have four people affected. Mm -hmm. which are their families. But that just are very friends. quickly, that question was also talking about the obstacles, and I think it was Klaus who mentioned in his presentation that you've got countries with very weak institutions in this part of the world, sadly, and we know that President Molina of Guatemala has talked about how the drug cartels, the gangs, have actually infiltrated state institutions like the judiciary, the security forces. Is that more the problem in this part of the world rather than the drugs? Uh, on this part of the world and also in West Africa, in West Africa, you have the narco states where the drug traffickers are taking over several countries in, in West Africa. And of course, it's not legalization that to solve the problem of West Africa or even, even other countries here in, in Latin America. Of course, you have to have a, a proper government, you have to invest in education, you invest in, in, in anti-corruption. You have to not, if you legalize drugs in West Africa, you want to make it one thing that is really bad, even, wor even worse. Klaus, one question. If drugs were legalized, what would happen? What would happen to the drug cartels, the people who sell drugs? Your question, well, it was Zena, a question from the audience. Yeah. From the lady what was, the what happens gangs? to prices and what happens to quantities? And this is a very important question. Will consumption increase? Will prices decline or will, be, will they increase? We do not have a scientific answer for that question. But we had the answer we from know, these two gentlemen here. They know, said however, studies show that once you allowed people to buy marijuana, the use up. of marijuana went up. Isn't that what you guys said? That wherever you have softer policies on drugs, the consumption increases. What no, are you waiting for? More facts? Don't, don't take, yeah, no, no. Don't take one case to do an inference because it depends in which way you will legalize it. This is a question which was asked time and again from the audience and also by our panelists who debate the other position. In which way you legalize makes a huge difference. As prices could go up after legalization or down. But just one point very quickly to you, Robert Bonner, which is your president, Barack Obama, says that if you did have softer policies on drugs, you'll find that the drug gangs actually just find other illicit activities like human trafficking and uh, money laundering and that kind of thing, that they're likely to go in that. Well, of course they will. I mean, organized crime is not going to go away. Drug gangs are not going to go away. And after the legalization of, of alcohol, after prohibition, organized crime didn't go away. They went into other kinds of crimes, drugs. including other kinds of dr illegal drugs. drugs. Okay. All right. Let's hear some more from the audience. Who's got it? Stand, please. Hi, um, I would like to ask a question to Mr. Robert Bonner. You asked us if we wanted to live in countries full of drug addicts. However, that does not take the, the essential problem in South America, is we live in countries where 43 students are killed, where 75,000 people are killed by warlords. So the DEA has been present in our continent for quite a long time, and we have non, not seen the numbers, uh, positive numbers from this war against drugs. So how do you suggest 
that we can tackle this new war because if we cannot legalize it, what should we do? Yep, who's got the microphone? Yep. Uh, there's an aspect of uh, in the debate which has been neglected completely, and that is why, why, do, why do people take drugs? Isn't it just to cure pain? Okay, we'll take that as a comment. Who's got the microphone? Yep. I've never seen a war, a war being won. Most of the people lose in wars. And the war that is being lost here is the addiction. Who cares about the person who is addicted? Do you want your grandson, your grand-grandson to be addicted? No, not yours, but mine. So who makes decision? Maybe okay, doc, uh, thank you. Let's uh, put that question explain. directly. <laughs> Mr. President, would you like your grandchildren to be drug addicts? Would you like them to go into a supermarket to buy cookies laced with cannabis, for instance? No, of course not. Of course not. That was the question. And the question is, and the question is, how are you going to regulate? Because I think that the question of simply legalizing doesn't solve anything unless you have a lot of other things. And this is why I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's not a magic thing that just because you change a legislation, things are going to solve. Of course not. But let us be also, what about the other countries? It's not a question for just one country. It's a question for the other countries also. And what about, I say, in the United States, this is a domestic policy issue. It has never been possible. Only with President Obama in, in Cartagena was possible to have an international okay. discussion of the issue. And I say this is extremely unfair because, because you produce the money we pro to pay for that, but, then we have to produce the thing. Okay, let him answer. I mean, I'm a little bit confused about your point. You defend the idea that you need first prevention, then treatment, then regulation, and then you have legalization, or do you think that legalization will solve all no, the problems? No, not at all. You have to do the thing. This is like signing a, a free trade agreement. You have a free trade agreement, but then you have to prepare the country to use the benefit of that. That's as simple as that. It's not possible, it's one word. What I'm trying to say is to make drugs illicit okay. has been working for so many years and look the results. Let Robert Bonner answer now because um, that's, yeah. yeah. Mr. President, I, I, I know uh, it's easy and many people blame the United States for this problem, but I want to give you two data points that I don't think you know. One is that cocaine use, including crack in the United States, was at an all-time high in 1990, six million regular users in the United States. That number today is 1.4 million. There has been, and well, how have we done that? It's first of all, having laws against traffickers and smugglers, but also drug education and drug treatment for those that become addicted. That's the policy, that's a drug control policy. This is true, there was a substitution from uh, cocaine to heroin in the United States and to other drugs. The question is how large is the total drug market in the US, including marijuana, soft drugs, hard drugs, terrible drugs, and intermediate drugs. We agree fully that our governments got to concentrate more resources in better design programs for much stronger education of our kids prevention, and if that doesn't work, uh, treatment of addiction. I fully agree with you, Dr. Larangelius, that our governments do not do enough. Mm -hmm. How can they do more? Okay. For instance, having more fiscal resources, we have estimated for the case of Chile, and some similar back of the envelope calculation I think would apply to Brazil, to Asia, or Africa, that if you legalize, definitely not all drugs, but a significant chunk of those drugs which so which a, ones? Which you, ones would you, you legalize? PCP, because LSD. I go uh, to yeah, the list, but Klaus, the motion is treat, the world should legalize drugs. Should legalize sequentially, gradually. So cocaine, very heroin, cocaine, legalize those in probably time. Probably would be on the list of legalized drugs, but definitely not crack and cocaine paste, which are much st may, more may strongly may damaging. Excuse me. Yeah, but it sounds like you're you, arguing, you, but you've you shifted to this but side this of it. No, no, but no, madam. Let me go with regard to heroin. In Switzerland, in Switzerland, with the heroin, they reduce the number of people because they take care as a health problem. If you are going to legalize, 
it's as important as that. When you were president, very quickly, why didn't you do this then if it's such oh, a great idea? Oh, that's a good question. Sorry. That's a good question. Sorry. Briefly. Very briefly. Because I have several doubts on the issue. Because I didn't was 100% sure. I was invited for the first report on the war on drugs. And I didn't want to sign it because I still have doubt if that was the correct position. So this is not a question that do it like that. I signed the second report, okay. the war on drugs, okay? Because I can convince I can because I can convince that the war is being defeated here right. in Very America. Quickly. We were yeah. we were successful in Colombia. But because we were successful in Colombia fighting with those that we are producing, then then the narcos decided to go north. They didn't are going to be anymore with regard to the supply side, but they okay. went to the demand side. And this is what you have now in Mexico. Therefore, we are paying the consequences, you see. And this is why I think that this has to be an international agreement, not a domestic policy issue. So everybody needs to do it, because it's a global problem. OK, fair enough. What I'm going to do now is going to take lots of brief, brief, brief comments from the floor. Please, gentlemen in the green. I used to be a drug addict. Um, I'm not now. But I think the, the question is simple. Are the, is the world best prepared for more kids on drugs or more kids dead? Mm. Stark choice. Uh, I just want to reply to Mr. Lagos. Um, in my country, 45 students were killed, and that was because of the government. I don't want to see a government having that business in their pocket so they can cover all the truth and not being able to talk what is going inside okay. the government. Is that I Mexico? Want to say that. Mexico? That's Mexico, yes. Mexico. Mr. Robert, junkies, crackheads, stoners, really? really? I, got the, I got the honor of serving with DEA agents and the DEA Educational Foundation. Right, I never, never heard an agent under your service talking about that people. Okay, some of the points that were raised there. Uh, the, the chap who said, I used to be a drug addict, and he thinks that there's a very stark choice between more kids on drugs or more kids dead. And I think by that, he's therefore in favor of some kind of uh, liberalization. So why don't you pick that up, Dr. Ronaldo Laranjera? No, I think there are pl many, many people who stop using drugs. Eh? You have, uh, in America, you have 20 million who are former drug users. Then we have to be hopeful that with the proper treatment, people stop using drugs. Uh, President Bush had an alcohol problem, for example. Uh, and he recovered from, from, from his addiction. All right, let's pick another question. There was a kind of gateway question, but um, may not have been specifically this, but just on the legalization of cannabis, which Klaus, you have been arguing for, it, there is some evidence, isn't there, that that kind of becomes a gateway drug, uh, drug and that young people think, oh, cannabis is all right, so maybe we'll go in for some cocaine? It's very much disputed. It goes one way or the other, depending which study you quote and what you, what you say about it. It's very much disputed. There's a typical issue where there is no black and white evidence about the gateway effects. Okay, let's just ask this side then. Um, could there be an exception made for marijuana, Ronaldo? Because you're the only medic amongst these people. I, I don't think so. The marijuana that you are talking about is changing all the time. Even in America, 15, 20 years ago, the content of cannabis was 5% of THC. That's the principle of the cannabis. Today, this level is 10%. And you have new products reach 30, 40%. Therefore, I don't believe that cannabis is a soft drug anymore. Thank you. Okay. So, you've heard our panel audience here in Santiago, the capital of Chile. I would like you to vote in our motion today, the world should legalize drugs. If you are for the motion, press button number one. If you are against the motion, press button number two. And if you're still undecided, you don't know, press button number three. 
So let me just remind you now, before I give you the results of this Intelligence Square debate here in Chile, for the motion, the world should legalise drugs, 59% of you were in favour, against 22%, don't know 19%. That's how you voted in coming in. And now, this is how you you've voted. For the motion, 52%. Against the motion, 38%. Undecided, 10%. So, you lost seven percentage points. You gained, if my arithmetic is correct, 16%. Well done. And the don't know, 10%. But you still managed to maintain your lead, so you have won the day. Congratulations for the motion, 52%. <laughs> Commiserations, but also well done. You pulled yourselves up from your bootstraps. So thank you all very much to our speakers and our audience here in Santiago, Chile, and what has been an extremely important uh, debate. Clearly, it's something which divides opinions here in the hall and across societies and countries, but it's a very important debate, a very important topic that affects us all. Thank you to my panel. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to Intelligence Squared Chile for making this possible. From me, Zain Abadawi, here in Santiago, Chile, at our first BBC World News Intelligence Squared debate in South America. Hola. Bye. <laughs>